Are you a caregiver whose spouse is depressed? The stress of caring for a depressed or sick spouse or person can lead a lot to caregivers feeling depressed, isolated, and alone. I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Stay with me for some tips about caregiver spouse depression. You can also visit my website, PamelaDWilson.com, for more information and tips. In many spousal situations, research confirms that there is a different opinion about how much help is actually provided. The caregiving spouse provides an amount of assistance and they look at that care differently from the spouse, the sick spouse who needs care, who may feel like they are doing more for themselves than they actually are, who may feel like they don't need as much help as the healthy spouse is giving them. In couple relationships, there can be a huge difference of opinion on how much help is provided, depending on who you ask. Disagreement can also exist about the healthy spouse going on with his or her life. The sick spouse may become very dependent, needy, demanding, and not be happy if the healthy spouse goes out and has lunch with friends or leads an active life while that sick spouse who may have a lot of health issues has to stay home all the time. So that can be another point of disagreement that can result in a lot of depression, anxiety, and conflict for spousal caregivers. The next issue is sleep. How many caregivers who are spouses get good sleep at night? If you don't, this affects you mentally. It affects you up here because you're not as focused. You're tired all day <laughs> and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I have so many problems to solve. How am I possibly going to do all of this? Spousal caregivers, you need your sleep. Even if you have to go sleep in a different bedroom at night, to get your sleep so that your spouse can sleep peacefully, I highly suggest doing that. You'd be amazed after a few nights how much better you feel, how more easily you're able to cope with all the stresses of being that spousal caregiver. Also in caregiving with spouses, there's a big difference between emotional care and support and physical care. The physical care seems to be more demanding, more difficult, because if you are having to help bathe a spouse, change a spouse, transfer a spouse, help with mobility, you actually can injure yourself and your spouse. At that point, it really is time to look at getting outside caregivers into the home that can help you. The emotional support for spouses can be also challenging because you're trying to lift your sick spouse out of apathy. I don't care about my health. I don't want to do anything about my health. Out of depression. Sometimes having a counselor come in to do that or doing virtual counseling appointments can be very helpful in that respect because you're not a trained counselor. You cannot possibly solve all of the emotional issues that your spouse has if they are deep-seated and long-standing and have been a long time part of your relationship. You also may need to go to a counselor, but separately. The lesson here is to be able to talk as spouses about the effects of caregiving and to be realistic. Now, your spouse may not agree. Your spouse may try to place guilt on you or make you feel bad for wanting to talk about this or wanting time for yourself. Spouses, if you don't take care of yourself, you cannot take care of that spouse. That is a huge conversation and a significant conversation to have. I'm Pamela D. Wilson. My website is PamelaDWilson.com. On their online caregiver courses, my podcast, articles, my library, more caregiving videos, a lot of help for spousal caregivers and aging adults. Thanks for watching this video. I look forward to seeing you all again soon in another video.